Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Rich Perez welcoming you back once again into another weekly dose of The Rundown. Of course, join in with me as always, my brother from another, my co-host all the way from the O, Kason Davis. How you doing, Kay? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Been a long week. A lot going on. Uh, did you get to see the fight last night? No, I didn't. I mean, Devin Haney went and put on a clinic. He looked very Floyd Mayweather esque as he take as he took down Cambosos to become undisputed lightweight champion of the world. But of course, that is not what we are really here to talk about today. We've been on a little hiatus. So, of course, we got to get some recaps before we get into this game two tonight between the Boston Celtics and the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. So, uh, I guess we could start in the West because there's not really too much to talk about there. I mean, Golden State went and put on a clinic. We were on here last time with Mike kind of talking about the way the series was going. I don't know if any of us thought there was going to be a sweep. I mean... Dallas is good enough to, to at least win one game. Luke is good enough to get you one game. But I felt like a lot of Dallas's downfall in that series came from my biggest criticism of Luke is something that you brought up a couple times here is he's not really sharing the ball too much. Like people are people are coming out saying Dallas needs to get another star in there. But I don't know. I, I, you could bring another star in there, but we we've seen this already in in Houston. So, yeah, uh, actually, if you remember, I said that I thought Golden State would win in five, and I took it back after Mike convinced me a little bit about Jason Kidd. I should have stuck on my answer about the Warriors in five. I didn't. I didn't think the the Mavs were good enough. I thought uh, they were kind of a little un- inexperienced, and the Warriors were obviously more experienced and things like that. But I, I, I. I I seen it being over in like five, so. <laughs> but uh, like I said, Mike convinced me with with Jason Kidd and kind of how well the Mavs are playing to get there. But the Mavs didn't seem like the team to me that could uh, take the Warriors. Right, agreed. I think they got a lot of work to do. Jason Kidd, he does. It's, it's not a situation where you could say he's got his work cut out for him. But I mean, he's he's got some work to do. They've definitely got a great foundation. It's a big step for them to get to the conference finals, but he's certainly got some work to do as far as transforming the product that he wants out on the floor a bit. But kudos to them. Kudos to Jason Kidd getting a chance to be a head coach again and making the most of it with his team. Really, a lot. obviously had a lot to do with Luka, but I think coaching matters in this league too. And Jason Kidd is definitely a big reason why they were able to take that next step and hopefully continue to take more steps moving forward. Out in the East, we had what I thought was a, I want to call it an amazing series. It went seven, but up until really game six, none of those, none of these games were really close at all. It was just kind of you take your turn, I take my turn, and we're going punch for punch for punch each game. One night, I mean game game one, I saw your tweets. You were pretty surprised to see what Miami, what Miami was able to do just in game one alone. But, I mean, I, I always maintain that this series is going to go seven. I didn't think that, at least for the first couple of games, that that's the way that it would have looked. But these teams, to me, were pretty were pretty on par with each other, at least defensively. And, I mean, the, big, the biggest thing, which we talked about when we were on here with Mike, you had the Celtics, who had two closers on their team. And then Miami, you had Jimmy Butler, Bam when he wanted when he wanted to be more aggressive, and then a bunch of role players. So it was really just one closer. You couldn't really get anybody else to step up for Jimmy when you needed him to, which is kind of what we <clears throat> what we brought up when we were dissecting that series going in. I mean, I was gonna say after game one, regardless regardless of what happens, if Miami advances or not. They have to go out and get themselves another star, and and B made his airway, made his way, made his way through the airwaves a little bit when he put out that tweet about saying Miami needs a second star, and he's been a little shaky with the Philadelphia organization. To me, I'm yeah, ha- having a five, having a having a productive five is a big deal, but to me, if you're the Miami Heat 
in this series. And we'll, we'll get into the Celtics a, a little bit after this. But if you're the Miami Heat, I think you have to do everything in your power to go after Bradley Beal. I heard the rumors that he's very happy in Washington and the plan is to sign, to, to re-sign that, that extension with them. I remember once upon a time, Kevin Durant was supposed to re-sign with the Oklahoma City Thunder. And then he went and signed with Golden State. So I think the roster could need, not that the roster needs shift, but they need another guy. I think Mike, we talked with Mike on the sides after, after that game seven. You you listen to Jimmy Butler talk when he makes the when he makes the statement, I can't have bad games. That's clearly a, a, a little shot at the, at the front office. So I think that you got to do everything. I feel like he... Bradley Beal fits the, fits this team perfectly with, with his skill set. I've always maintained that he he's to me on par as a shooter and as a player with with Clay Thompson. We just haven't talked about it much because he's in Washington, where nothing's really going on there right now. So again, I know I know what the what rumors are out there, but just saying, I think I think guys need to get on their recruitment mode heavy. Yeah, I wasn't as surprised about what Miami could do. I was more surprised about that one third quarter. Which- crazy in that, that first game uh yeah i think what you said is, is mostly true i think at the end of the day boston just had more weapons even when jason tatum had a bad game jalen brown was playing well also Jamar Allen also one of those guys and uh if you really think about the series the celtics controlled the series for most for really most of the series the series maybe should have been over in five or six Miami, if you think about it, they played great in game three and kind of game six. All the other games were kind of like, well, game one, Boston controlled it for besides one quarter. And then all the other games that they won and things like that. So, obviously, like everyone's saying, they probably could use another star. But they were still right there from winning, winning that series, even with all things considered. Uh, Shrews' three got taken away when he said he stepped on the line. If they don't take that away, maybe we have a different story. Uh and then that last three by uh, Jimmy Butler, I think he was kind of at the point where we're, we're in a game seven. He was hurt. And he was kind of like, we're, we're either going to win it or lose it. I don't think he really maybe wanted to go into overtime, especially playing at that point. He had played the whole game. I don't know if he had maybe another five or six minutes in him. And that's that goes back to not having another star to go out there and be able to, uh, to leave him for some minutes and things like that. So. Yeah, I, th- I think all that's true. And I, there was a lot of controversy about the three. Obviously, that's not Jimmy Butler's game, so maybe you want him to take a better shot. But Al Horford was second off, so you would say it was an open shot. He could also but like, drove drove by him and, and got blocked. He could have pulled up for a mid-range and missed it. So that's the name of the game. It's to make a mislead, and he just missed that one. I'm not mad at him taking the shot. I don't think it was a, especially when you look at how how he was shoot how he was shooting from three throughout that game. That's not the shot. That's not a great shot. Like it's kind of. I think I think we saw Mike talk about this um, a, after the game. He, he he referenced the port the Portland Oklahoma City series where Dame hit that hit that shot in front of Paul George's face. Like you know we can say what we want after the fact. Like putting Paul George is salty and all that. That if you really think about it. But when Paul George says that's a bad shot, he's not wrong. But when you got a guy with the range of Dame, and it's just like it, you 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 talk about make or miss league. That you're not mad that a guy like Dame is taking that shot. You can call it a bad shot, but you're never mad that 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 guy is taking that shot. I feel like especially the way Jimmy Butler played a lot of this series, I would say that's a bad shot. But I can't be mad at him for taking it, given the circumstances and how he was able to up his level throughout the playoffs once again. I wouldn't even say that. That was a bad shot. Like, the Dame shot, you could maybe say it's a bad shot. Like, if he misses, say if they're down one, he takes that shot and you miss it. Everyone would say, what is that guy doing? Also, he was hot that game. So, I guess maybe sometimes it, 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 it depends on the circumstances. But say he's not hot that game, they're down one, and he takes that shot and misses it. He'll get killed about how bad of a shot it was. So, I think it's a bad shot. He just made it. But I think Jimmy Butler is just not a bad shot at all. However, with sag it off, like you said, he was shooting well from three. It was an open three. <clears throat> so, I don't, I don't want to say it's a bad shot. My, maybe not the greatest shot for him. But I think that's a make a That's like a 
niggas gonna shot. It wasn't like ah, I just don't. I don't think it's a bad shot at all. He just missed it. I just think given the circumstances, yeah, that's not what you want him doing. Just when you look at the the way that the game is going, at, at that way that part of the game was going for him. You could even still call it a bit, even if like. Hor- Horford sagging off. If you want to, if you want to make it a mid range, because he was shoot, he was shooting pretty good from the field. Or you want to, you want to, you want to go for a mid range. Even if you want, if you want to just take it up yourself. Like I still, I still feel like he he's capable of score of scoring that even with what Horford kind of defended him in in that situation. But then he's capable of making the three. He could have took one dribble in and missed it. He could have took two dribbles in and got blocked. It's, I, I don't think it's, obviously like I think that it comes down to that's not really what he does which is why people will say it's a bad shot but I I, I don't know I, I I think we both kind of said it I, I'm living with the shot I, I don't I think it's obviously maybe you not bad at it for his game maybe you could have got a better shot but every time I when I think about it he could have took one dribble in and missed. He could have took two dribbles in and got blocked. So I, I think I, I think the shot's fine. You kind of live with it. It's your best player taking an open three. I, I think what makes it look bad too is that they were coming back. They had the momentum. So maybe we kind of go in, but or maybe you know we probably want someone else to take the shot. I don't know. I, I'm living with it. I know that. Yeah, again, I'm not even even as a as a Heat fan. I'm not again. I'm not mad at it. It's not like Jimmy's Russell Westbrook. You don't want Russell Westbrook ever taking threes, especially in that type of situation. Like uh, Jim, Jimmy, I don't know. at this point in Russ's game, do you want Russ taking that shot? I'm living. I, I don't know. Maybe. Nah, nah, nah. Like uh, yeah, obviously, I, the numbers say no, but I can show you a <laughs> lot of threes that Russ took at that time that he missed. At this point in Russell Westbrook's career, you were you were cool with him taking that shot. I'm looking for it, yeah. Oh man. No, nah, I can't, I can't, I can't. Not that one. I've seen him make I've and... seen it too. I've seen Russ I mean the 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 first year, the first year that he averaged triple double. The when like it, he the game the game against Denver, he hit the game winner from from it was a crazy shot. This but again, it, where but like we're at a different we're at, we're at a different stage in his career. He's just he's been really bad from three the last two years, like historically bad. Uh, I may be fine with it. All right, all right. Look, at, at the end of the day, not mad at it. Um, again, I think Miami. If I if I am the Heat, especially because you gotta you gotta think Pat Riley's blood is boiling after that one. It's the one team that he like does not like losing to in the Celtics. Like they they got a ton of work to do. Even if you gotta trade some of your favorite young guys to make it happen, I think you you should go all in on Beal. But that's just that's just how I feel. Again, I know I know what what the what's out there and all that. But hey, it it is what it is. I expect changes for the Heat too. I don't think they're gonna just sit around and do nothing this summer. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think I think they could. They obviously can up, upgrade that roster. They play well this season, and they made it pretty far. But when you look at it, the star power is kind of just not there. They have a lot of guys that they developed and came up at the G League or undrafted or wherever those guys are. But I think from, from like a game seven in that situation, I don't know if you really want to rely on those, those type of guys. Yeah, and, you you need another guy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And to the Russell Westbrook point. I think right now, because you have LeBron on your team, yeah, it probably doesn't look good. But if he's on that Heat team and you take Jimmy Butler off and he takes that, yeah. if, yo, are you ready? Are you ready for this? If Russell Westbrook is on this Heat team, I I think they might have went to the NBA Finals. Mm. He's not a third. He's not a third option. He's a second. He's a second option. And if you've got Russell Westbrook, you're definitely staggering their minutes. If you've got Russell Westbrook on the floor, like Butler, Butler's probably not even fit. Maybe Butler does have a better game from three because he's not, he's not so heavy. It, you, you could t- he he would have played less minutes, so it would have been a lot, a lot less wear and tear on his body throughout the game. 
You, I think I think a rut because again, you know how I feel about Russ as a point guard. I think that would have been a whole different story. Hey, if the if, hey man, the Lakers are never gonna get that first round pick, but I don't, I don't think I'd be mad at, at Russ down in Miami either. That'd, that'd be that'd be uh, super interesting, especially with Kyle Lowry being there. But I see, I see. I think you, if you uh, Lowry's in that deal. If you if you're bringing Russ to Miami, Lowry's in that deal. Yeah. So, I yeah I do. <laughs> Uh, but I digress. Let's go on to the Celtics part of things before we recap that game one and then get into some game two preview. Uh, to me, this is a team. I, to me, this is, and I remember, again, I said this was going seven. I also think there's a clip out there. I don't know if it was from the show, our last show or the show before that, where I said, if the Celtics go to the NBA finals, I think they are more than capable of being able to win an NBA title. Some people are looking at it like, little shock that they were able to take game one, especially with Golden State having the rest that they had. I I would say it doesn't matter. And I just had this conversation with someone else. I would say it doesn't matter where the league is at offensively. Defense still wins championships in 2022, and the better defensive team is the Boston Celtics. Uh, you know, everybody, the talk, the talk after game one was... Other other guys stepping up. I, I think, you know, that's something. But, you know, the top stars on Golden State are still older. Jordan Poole can't play. That is, is not a great defensive player as good as he is from as he as he as good as he is from an offensive standpoint. And then you gotta think that that he's kind of living in the moment as as a first his first year in the NBA finals. So for for the Celtics. I think it's scary. It's scary right now because they literally throughout this entire playoffs, like, even though I've been one to argue that they've been here because they've been to three now three conference finals. Like you could clearly see a team that's still kind of going through the growing pains of trying to win a championship. And in a sense, they kind of remind me a little bit of Golden State in 2015, where it was like they were always that young team that was there competing and then things just started clicking they might be the next team that people have to deal with, especially if they if they win. It's a whole different story. Yeah, I don't expect Tatum to. I don't expect Tatum to play as bad as he did offensively in Game One. This is, I, I think the series probably ends in six or seven, but I. Oh, it might. Like, you said you think Golden State is is at a point where it might they might like take a rain on the league. I, I'm not quick to say that. I think. Boston. I mean, I, I haven't actually. I never actually made my pick. I just said I think that they could win it. I'm. I'm. And trust me, it's not. It's not easy to say this, but I think the Boston Celtics are the 2022 NBA champions when this when this thing is all said and done. I think uh, defensively is where they, where they make a difference. They're gonna be able to keep this this uh this defense up for the next couple of years. I think uh, they're definitely gonna be a problem. Obviously, with the run they had this year, next year. Maybe someone figured them out. I think they really kind of punched people in the mouth this year with their, their defense. Obviously, second half of the season, they had the number one defense in the league. But in the playoffs, I don't think people expected to be what they, they've seen. So they win it this year. Obviously, now they're champions, and they come back more confident. They have that championship experience and that hard of a champion. So it would be hard to knock them out. They keep the defense up. I can, I can see them. I still think it'd be pretty tough for them to, to go on the run. Obviously, I expect the, the Celtics to not the Celtics. I expect the Nets to be better next year. I think this year was just too much things going on. Kyrie being out, the James Harden drama, KD, uh, KD's injury, and they just thought they could put it together and it'd be fine come playoff time. And I just don't think that's how it works in this league. So I think next year when everything's probably be fine and they're together for a full year, and Ben Simmons is there, and just another young superstar can handle the ball defense bring something different for them i still think they'll be in there obviously we're going to see what miami is going to do but even if they don't add another superstar i think they'll be in there who knows what happens with the with the with the 76 ers so i still think the the, the east is still has some competition the bucks are always going to be there obviously that series was a toss-up you, you think maybe it's milwaukee <coughs> and they come away with that so they, they'll be in the mix they have a chance to make it back and I can I can see them going on a little run, but I still think it'll be tough. I I I said Golden State in seven, 
I'm not surprised. I'm I'm not surprised that the Celtics won game one. I think it's the how they won game one that everyone should be surprised about. Uh, that fourth quarter, they were just able to go on a three point barrage and the defense that they were they were going on out there. I think it's great. So I think not that they won game one. It's how they won game one. I expect Golden State to bounce back tonight fully, and I expect them to get this game. I'd be absolutely shocked if they lose tonight. So I think that the Boston Celtics has, has showed us a lot. I'm going to stick with my pick with Golden State in seven. And I think that's how it is. The Boston, the Celtics have, for as good as they've been this year, I mean this player for us, for some reason why they, they, they – lose a lot of games at home when they have a chance to kind of maybe really put a stranglehold on a series or something like that. I think last series, they, they're they up one. No, it's 1-1 one, one going back to Boston. They lose one of those games, and then they end up losing game six. They lost a whole bunch of games, and, and they lost game one in the Bucks series. I think they ended up losing game five, too. So for some reason, why they're not able to really defend home court like that. So I see Golden State going in there and getting one. And then we're tied going back to Golden State for game five. And then from there, I think it's team one one and Golden State in seven. Well, I th- again, I think that goes a lot to the growing pains that, that we're talking about with a, with a young team like this. Side, side point, by the way, we talked to we, – I keep having a reference, that conversation of, of being able to build a winner through the draft. The Celtics are literally in the NBA Finals with a core of, of drafted guys. Marcus Smart, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, all drafted. Shout out to the Nets. Um, so just another, just another small example of you can build a winner through the draft. It's not just Golden State. You know, we'll, we'll see what, what happens with Memphis, but I, I wish Mike was in here right now because just proving my point even more. Anyway, um, that's kind of, that's kind of hitting to, to the growing pains of things, but I, I feel like they've, they've learned throughout this, this playoff run for the Celtics has been different than in years past. You know, when they made the first conference finals, it's like, they're not even supposed to be here. This is when Kyrie was still on the team, and it's like this is that that new young team on the block. Here, I think that you've kind of seen them transition into a contender more where people have talked about are they ready to make the jump. Usually when you have a team that you're t- starting to talk about ready to make the jump, you're still going to see some, some type of young team mistakes throughout the playoffs. I, I think that's going to be a reason why this drags out to six, seven games. But again, de- defense defensively, they've still been on point. Um, one of the reasons why why I was saying I thought Golden State was kind of done being the you people could say that that's foolish for me to say, but one of the reasons why I said they were kind of done winning championships in this league, their other teams are getting younger, they're hungrier. Like the Memphis Grizzlies, that series could have went a lot differently if they don't lose John ja Morant. They're in a series right now, very similar to the Memphis series with the difference being you have two guys that can take you out. Tatum didn't have a great game, but Jalen, Jalen Brown was a huge reason why they won that game one. So I, I don't know. I just, I think that they present a lot of issues to the warriors throughout this series. And the other thing I got to say, man, I am pretty sure you're going to push back on me on, on this. A lot of people are going to push back on me on this. I understand Steph Curry got put up put up 35 in game one. That was a, that had a lot to do with the fire that he was on to, to start the game off. But as the game went on, you clearly started to see him slow down a bit. And it's kind of pushing to the narrative, which is why he hasn't won a finals MVP to this point, that when you really need him to show up, in the in the NBA finals for whatever reason, he's just he just doesn't give you that extra push that you need your superstars to give you to win a championship. Yeah, I mean, you you can say that in in the case of kind of there. I think that whole offense kind of started falling off. Obviously, that was kind of more in the fourth quarter, but I think in that first quarter, it was uh, was getting a lot of open looks. Plus, the Celtics were making a lot of mistakes. I think the Celtics changed up their defense on him, and obviously, they have the defensive player of the year, Marcus Smart, so... And then Derek White came in and was able to play play some very good defense for them. So I think if it's gonna come down and like and the Celtics are still gonna make those those growing pains and things like that, I think the Warriors are not a team, especially in the NBA Finals, that you can do that and be able to come away with the series. I think they're gonna have to be able to grow up from these growing pains and, and really go in and handle their business in these final series if they're gonna 
they're going to win. They don't have home court advantage, and the Warriors. Well, right now they do. Right now, yeah, right now they do. But I'm saying, like, if they, they don't handle their business, it's going to be a game seven and go to state or something like that. So they really got to handle their business in this series, and they'll win because if you think about it, game six clay is there. So it, with any – even the Warriors have had their backs against the wall for the most part besides, obviously, that 2016 series. And you wouldn't even say that backs was against the wall until game seven because they were up for most of that series. And now a lot of people didn't expect the Cavs to, to come back. So oh, usually when their backs against the wall, Clay answers or somebody answers and the team answers and they, they, they find a way to stage off elimination. I think the Cavs, Celtics really got to go in and handle their business, and it's just not one where they can kind of close their shoes. And that's part of the reason why I'm picking the, the Warriors to get it in five. Well, when you look when you look at the games, their struggles aren't defensively. This is what I mean when I I'm, I got to go with the with the team that's better defensively, especially when you got a team like Golden State that's turning over the, over the ball and not and not so good moments to do that, like. It's the all the off. It's really been offensive struggles, and they have multiple pieces that they can throw on whoever, whoever's hot at the time. Tate, it was it was one of their biggest. It was one of the biggest reasons why they beat Brooklyn because they were throwing bodies on top of bodies on KD, things that he wasn't used to seeing. And he he Kate, I think Jalen Rose brought this up. How KD is playing defense a hundred. He's playing defense and offense a hundred percent of the time. That wasn't the case for the Celtics. Like. This series, one of the other reasons why it's going to drag out to me is because it's never going to be a point where I'm looking at the Celtics like these guys are starting to get gassed. They, Golden State looked like they had nothing left to give at the, towards the end of that fourth quarter. Which is yeah. great. You know, you could go to the rust. You can go to the, you can go to the, the rest versus rust argument. But I think that that, that that still says something, that you were off that much time and, still, and looked that tired. That's true. Obviously, their defense is great, but they it just throughout this playoff run, you've seen them just. I don't even say it's their defense that didn't really show up, but you just seen in certain games they did not show up when they they need they needed to. That game five against the Bucks at home. Obviously, Drew Holiday made some great plays down the stretch and things like that, and then uh, that game six at home versus the Heat. Just things like that throughout this playoff run. I don't, I don't know if it's their defense, their offense, or kind of what happens, but they just have these these mental laps. It seems like where they don't kind of come in and handle their business when they need to, and I think that that type of like those type of laps in this series and the NBA Finals will kind of hurt them. So I can see, like I said, Golden State going into into Boston and getting one of those games, and I think obviously that that changes this whole series around. I think that's exactly what's going to happen too. We're pro- we're probably in a two two series going into Game Five, but and I, if they want to win, it needs to be three one going back to Golden State. They need to go home. I don't agree. I don't agree. I I don't agree. Like they, you the mental lapses that you're talking about are true, but at the end of the day, when it was time for them to perform on both ends of the floor and get a win when they needed it, they did it. They went. They won back to back games against a champion in the in the conference semis. Like they, the the growing pains are there, but like it's the, I, these guys are in in a sense ready to do this. Like he, let's not like look look at Golden State when they won their first championship in 2015. You you could we could make the. The real argument that that game that that series shouldn't have lasted as long as it did. One of the big reasons why it did, and I, I, we get that they were playing against LeBron, but you grow. There's growing pains in in not being a champion yet. There, I th- even if you look at that run, like Golden State kind of displayed that. It's it's weird to me that this team almost mirrors, almost mirrors that 2015 team. I, it's, it's to me that to me this is kind of I and I don't I'm not gonna say Golden State and Golden State I'm not gonna say Boston is, is the next dynasty because I agree with you there's gonna be the the East is is on the East isn't what it used to be the East is pretty competitive right now when you got a champion coming back you got what is Brooklyn doing Miami you don't expect them to do to just sit around what is Philly doing but 
um, like Bro- Brooklyn just seems, I mean, Brooklyn, Boston just seems like they're that next one up. This, this is a series. This is a series. The, the point I wanted to make was this is eerily similar to me is when the Bulls played the Lakers in 1991. I, I, I think it's a little different. The, the, that, that Lakers team was kind of on their last leg. If you remember, they, they wasn't even, I think they had to put a nice little run together. A lot of guys were out. A lot of guys were out. And they had to put a nice little run together to even kind of get into the playoffs and to be able to make that run. That that team wasn't good for, for most of the year, if I remember. So I think it's a, it's a little different. I think the Warriors are just a different beast to me. I, like I said, I'd be surprised if, if Boston can kind of go in there and get two wins in, in Golden State. I think they punched them in the mouth right now, which kind of woke Golden State up. And I, like I said, well, I think when it just it comes down to it, Golden State is a team when you have them against the ropes, you kind of got to finish them off. I think if you, you, play, you play around and you don't finish them off, and you you really get them like uh, with their backs against the wall. Like I said, Clay may end up going off for seven threes or something. It's gonna be interesting to see how Jordan Poole plays in this series. Like you said, his defense hasn't been the greatest, and then I don't think he looked that good with Marcus Smart guarding him. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, uh, but again, that's like what I'm talking about. When you got mo these guys, you can just get a bunch of switches on whoever whoever they feel like they need to do it to. Yeah, definitely. But I think, like I said, when the, if you have Golden State, you have the opportunity to go up three one of Golden State. You need you need to take that. I think if you you let them go in there and win one, and then you're going back to or- Oracle for a game five, or even if you you're going to uh, Boston for a game six and you're up three two. Like I said, that's the t- those are the type of games where Clay goes off for seven, uh, seven to 11, 13 threes. And now you're back in Oracle for a game seven. And I just think if it comes down to being in Oracle for a game seven, I don't know if I see this young team beating them in Oracle for a game seven. Did, look, I think one of, one of the reasons why I said earlier why I think you're kind of seeing a transition with this team, that this playoff run is different to me. Is because these guys are learning. These guys, these guys are learning. Like they, they have been extremely battle tested throughout these playoffs, which I think is going to serve them well in this finals. With as opposed to Golden State's only really been battle tested in these in these playoffs once, and that was against Memphis. I think that they're going that they're just going to be. I, I think what they've had to go through between. They slayed one of the biggest reasons why why I can't count them out on on this and why I think they're going to win is I, I just saw them slay a champion in the semis and ha- and have to go and win two in a row to do it. I saw them go to Miami in a game five when it when the atmosphere was looking pretty pretty much in Miami's favor and get it done when they when they had to do it. I've seen them get punched in the face and then respond. Those, those are and, all. Well, I was gonna say, I think they're, 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 the 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 youth plays a factor. This is what they're. These guys are five years in on this thing, six years in on this thing. I guess, depending, because if it, uh, Jalen Brown was there, that would be a good indicator. Somewhere around there. I I think. Lock it in, lock lock it in. I'm re- I'm ready to say it. I'm ready to say it. I think it's like I said. I think Golden State is a different beast, and this is a different level. This is the NBA Finals. You, you. I think you tweeted it to start the game. You see how the moment seemed a little too big for Jason Tatum. At yeah, absolutely. The game. I think uh, obviously going into Milwaukee and getting those wins, and getting those two wins, you're back against the wall. Going into Miami for Game Seven are all good things and help you battle test it. I don't think Golden State needed to be battle tested throughout this playoffs because they've been battle tested before. So. They know what to do. And their main guys know kind of what to do in that situation. So them being battle tested in the playoffs doesn't really make a difference to me. I just don't think going into it's not even Oracle no more. I've been calling it Oracle. This whole Chase, the Chase Center. Center. I just don't think 
going to Golden State to get a win like that is the same as going into Milwaukee. Obviously, Milwaukee, defending champs, those those uh, those type of things. But Chris Middleton was missing. I still don't think. Obviously, the Chase Center is different from Oracle, which makes it a little different. But I still don't think those atmospheres are the same. No, they're not. But the the fans at the Chase Center still still, you know, they they still keep them up. So I I just think going into Chase Center and going into Milwaukee are two different type of environments. I think going against Steph Curry and uh, Clay Thompson is different than going against Giannis. I look, but they're different in their own. They're they're different in their own ways. Like they, Giannis is still like we we still can't say that like like put like getting taking Giannis down is an easy task. No, but I would say taking the Warriors down is a hard attack, especially without Chris Middleton. So, but the champ, every championship run has it has that one thing that you can point out. Even the, the Golden State's had it in in numerous ones. I mean, you could say that the Bulls have dealt every every championship run has had its things that you could point out. Yeah, but my point is just that them going into Milwaukee and getting those wins. Without Chris Middleton, I don't think it's the same of them going into Golden State trying to get a win. I just think it's 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 obviously they're battle tested, but I think this is a different beast. Is the point that I'm getting at? I hear you. I hear you. Um, I don't know. I guess we're gonna we're just gonna have to watch this one play out. We're just gonna have to watch this one play out and then uh see see where it goes from here. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Golden State to to win Game Two. We're going back to Boston one one. Yeah, I'd be. Absolutely surprised if Boston wins this game too. If Boston wins this game too, this series is over. They get swept. No, yeah. no. You if if they're going down two, no, they're not swept. So I I I refuse to believe that. If at worst at the Celtics win the night, it's over. At wor- oh yeah, I, I definitely think if the Celtics win the night, this series is over. But I don't see them getting swept. I think they might lose in five. No. Look at what game. you were just talking. We were just talking about having Steph Curry and Klay Thompson on the team. They can't get you a game. Nah, no. Nah. Because if, <laughs> if, if it gets what? to a game, if it gets to a game five, they would have to win in six. If it gets not enough, if they win tonight, it has to be a sweat sweep. If it gets to a game five, I'm picking Golden State to win. I'm picking them to come back from down three. The team that the the first team to blow an NBA Finals down three one comes back from down three one in NBA Finals. That would be a hell of a story to tell. I'm not gonna lie to you. It, it, it at least Boston's winning in six. They get back to Oracle, an Oracle. They get back to San Francisco down three one. Golden State's definitely winning that game five. I have no doubt that they're gonna lose that game five. Game then game six, all the pressures on Boston. I may pick on State in that one. And then we're back. I, hey, I hear you, man. Game seven. So I hear you, man. I went tonight. They better sweep them. Or they're in trouble. That's the first time I've ever heard something like that. But I'm but I mean if it, when we're talking about a team like the Warriors, I guess it's not a, a statement that you could look at and think it's crazy to say. Um Because if they win man, both games in Golden State. Are we confident that Golden State's gonna go to Boston to get a win? I'm not. I guess that goes I, I, it's Golden State. Else saying. That goes it's Golden else. State. Yeah. That goes against everything I was saying about their backs being against the wall and how they respond and yada yada yada. Throw all that out the window. Boston wins tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it it they better sweep them. I don't see them going to Boston and getting two wins. I'm not saying they're gonna get two no, wins, get but I don't. I, to say that they can't get one win in Boston, this is the Warriors we're talking about here. No, because if I get two, nah, nah, nah. Boston better sweep. If we get two in San Francisco, if y'all come back home and lose a game, if I'm the coach, I am. I'm going Man, what if? What if? What if they beat them in five? The Celtics. Yeah. What if they beat? They've already shown they can win on the road over there. I would be slightly surprised, just for what I was saying before. They have shown us throughout the series, throughout the this playoff run, that they kind of lack off some games. But 
in the same sense, I wouldn't be as surprised because you're supposed to learn from those mistakes. So if they're doing what they're supposed to, they learn from those mistakes from the last two series, and they, they finished it off how they should, and that's how it should go. You learn, and then it was the biggest stage. You go and finish your business. So I wouldn't be that surprised. I, and then obviously it's going to state, so that adds a little surprise factor. You don't expect going to state to go out in five no matter what. So I would be, I'd be slightly surprised. If they sweep them, I'd be surprised. So if they went in five, I'd be surprised too. So I'd, I'd be, I'd be surprised, but I'd also be saying that's what you're supposed to do. Like you're supposed to learn from those other series and finish off your business here. You got this game one. Finish your finish. You, you uh, y'all learned and y'all did what y'all supposed to do. So surprised, but at the same time, that's what you're supposed to. do. I tell you, I think that at the end we we can say everything that we that we said. I I have a feeling at the end of the day that this is going to be a series that we're uh we're talking about. I feel like these are two these are still two interesting teams that can that can attack in different ways. Yeah, I think the series is going to be talked about either way. Uh, Boston wins. The the, the 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 talk is about how they 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 knocked off Golden State and how they might be the dynasty going forward. Uh, Golden State wins. The talk is how they are a dynasty and who's gonna stop them going forward. <laughs> so, so no matter how it talk, how how it chops up, I think this this series is gonna be uh, gonna be talked about. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I wasn't going to bring this up, but I saw something pop up on my phone that made me want to talk about it. So. Um, we've we've heard the the rumors and all the rumblings about Quinn Snyder possibly leaving the Utah Jazz and just kind of taking some time off, similar to when Pat Riley left the Lakers, to just reassess what he wants to do going forward. It's been a long run with Utah. They they've had some some pretty fun playoff moments to watch over the last couple of years between this new run with Donovan Mitchell and then even when it was Gordon Hayward who was their star guy. Um. You know, I can understand why what what Quinn Schneider why Quinn Schneider's feeling the way that he's feeling. Uh and again, I wasn't going to bring it up because we we kind of talked about it. It's like what are we we're not really gonna be able to say much here except a lot of speculation. I did see that the Utah Jazz could be eyeing Terry Stotts, who was just a finalist for the Lakers job. And I mean, we didn't even get into that. Dar Darvin Ham being the new head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, but to me, if I think Terry Stotts can can coach can coach very well, I don't see the Utah Jazz really do. I think I see the Utah Jazz just another good team with Terry Stotts because Terry Stotts in Utah is not going to have anything much different than he had in Portland. Yeah, my 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 thing to that is is Terry Stotts. Stotts is it Scotts or Scotts? Stotts Stotts. Okay. Is he, to what you said, is going to be like the same thing in Portland? And is he that much better of a coach than Quinn Snyder? Is my question. I think they're along the same lines. So I think you'd be going in a circle in the sense. Mm -hmm. I've seen he was up for the Lakers job. Obviously a very good coach. I just don't know if he's that much better than Quinn Snyder to get rid of Quinn Snyder and, and, and bring him in. I, I I think you're you're still in the same spot. You might be a good regular season team, win a couple, win, win a round or two in the playoffs. Who knows? But I guess maybe they may change this whole roster around. But I don't know how much different he he's what how much different it's going to be from Quinn Snyder. Well, they're kind of in limbo right now. I mean, is. Because we don't even really know what's going on with Schneider. If he wants, if he wants to take more of a front office role, but then again, why would you? You would just kind of ask if you could, if you can get moved up in the in the Utah organization. So that's definitely something to look out for. I'm with you 100 on the on the Terry Stotts talk of them kind of being on par with each other as coaches. And then this roster is really in limbo too. Because do you, you know, do you trade? Uh, do you trade Rudy Gobert? Do you keep him? We know that these guys, that him and Donovan aren't really behind the scenes the, the closest. So, 
I don't know. It's a, it's, a, it's an interesting it's an interesting thing going on in Utah right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So we'll, we'll see see where it go with this moving forward. I don't know if they want to maybe make some roster changes first, and then maybe bring in a coach off of that. Or if they want to bring in the coach and see what they want to do, see what he wants to do or what he could do with this roster. But and we're gonna talk about coaches. I think Kenny Atkinson's up for the Charlotte job. I think that'd be a great fit. So shout out to Kenny Atkinson. So do I. Yeah, I think I think uh, Kenny. I think that's actually the perfect job for Kenny Atkinson. Definitely, I think that's like you think about that that uh, Brooklyn Nets team. I think the the uh, this Charlotte Hornets team can mirror that team kind of a lot. Obviously, maybe a little more talent, a little higher draft picks, but I, I think he can do a lot with that team. No real, real superstar. I guess what Melo's like the superstar, but he's not as ball dominant. He's more of a passer, so it'd be a team. Who passes the ball? All play for each other, kind of like that Brooklyn Nets team. So, I, I think he'd be a great fit right there. I heard I, I heard um a, cu- a couple names interested on in Colin Sexton this uh this free agency as well. I heard Detroit Detroit might be in, which was a little weird to me. Um, uh, man, can I even find that right now? I seen San Antonio. I didn't see that. I think I'd like I'd, I'd like him. Oh, look at this! Even even on a, a, I didn't even see this an hour ago that Quinn Schneider actually wants to keep coaching. He just doesn't think he's the right that they need a new voice in Utah. So man, these guys these guys went and burnt out Quinn Schneider over there with that nonsense. I mean, I mean, you think about it. They've been there for. He's been there long enough. Where's the team really gone? Have they made it to the conference final? I don't think so. So it's sometimes I don't think it's him. Like you say, you just maybe need a new a new voice over there. So when you've been somewhere long enough and you're kind of not maybe winning championships, that's usually how it goes. Get a new voice in there. So I wouldn't even knock him too much for that. Yeah, I um, I I, I hear that. I definitely um, hear that a lot. Uh, I was did I, did we ever talk about the uh, the Magic getting the number one overall pick? Well, let, let's close. Let's close out with that one because I know you're you're pretty close over there right now. I mean, Orlando might be a scary team in about two three years. You think about every they didn't have Markel Fultz really really at all this year. You're um you're bringing back Cole Anthony. We'll see what happens with Jalen Suggs. You, you talk you guys Wagner had a had a hell of a year this year. There's a lot of talent on that team. You probably trade Mo Bamba, even though he's gotten better, but not to the level that you want a, a guy like him to be. Jabari, the, the consensus is Jabari Smith is the number one overall pick. He's a big that can stretch the floor. By the way, the last t- two times that the Orlando Magic had the number one overall pick, they took two bigs, and it went very well for them on both occasions. So on NBA Finals with both of those. So I, I, this Kudos to the front office over there. This might be, this might be a team to look out for. Yeah, they have a lot. They have a lot of talent. Uh, obviously, a lot of people think Ched, Ched, Ched is the number one pick. I think uh, I've seen a lot of scouts and uh, I guess draft analysts and stuff like that saying that he, he's the be- he's the number one pick here. Uh, obviously. Ken Carroll, he's in there from Duke, and then obviously uh, Jabari Smith is in there. I think uh, I would, depending on, and I see Obama talking about the Knicks and following Knicks people and stuff like that, so he may be making his way back home. But I, I wouldn't go Ched for the fact that he basically, to me, is Obama. I don't know what different, what different he brings than Obama. Maybe, he's skinnier. Maybe a little better handle. Maybe a better shooter. Not sure about it. So he'll be another. I think him and Obama kind of mirror each other. Obviously, in this draft, people think Chad will be higher and, and better than Obama, but I think you'll be getting the same player. So I would keep me, and obviously, I would. I should say this. I have no inside access. No one in the organization says, Kaysan, we're thinking about drafting this person. So I do work for the Magic, but they I'm at the bottom of the total pole. They're not telling me anything. But uh, I would keep Mo Bamba 
And then, I mean, obviously, Chad would be on a cheaper contract, but I, I would keep Mo Bamba, same player, and I, I would go Jabari or Pablo Banquero. I think they bring something different to the table. Obviously, Jabari being an elite jump shooter, I think Banquero is obviously a jump shooter, too. Not as good. He's a little more dominant in the paint and things like that. But if you think about the last maybe 10, 15 uh, NBA Finals MVPs, they've all been wing players. You think KD, Braun, uh, Kawhi, Iguodala. So they've all been wing players. So I think having an elite wing player li like that is, is kind of what has been successful in this league. So they have talent, like you said, Jabari. I mean, uh, Marco Folk missed most of the season. If you looked at them this season, they they really missed the veteran point guard. And when he came back, he was getting like 15 assists and things like that. So I think having him back for a full season is great for them. Uh, I think you put Jalen at the two. You bring Cole off the bench. Jalen being playing defense and things like that at the two. You bring Cole in to come off the bench and kind of just be that six man. You give him the ball and do whatever he wants with that second unit. And then I. It gets a little interesting because if J.I. comes back, I think you draft another wing. So now there's J.I., there's Franz, there's I have Wendell. I completely forgot about Isaac. There's Wendell. So they have a, a very good problem. I thought even before they got the number one pick that they I think they would be a lot better team next year. I think they'd be a pretty decent team, nothing like they were this year. Just for the fact that they had Markel coming back, Jalen for – Jalen now full year, and after he sat out some of the season, he came back. He played better when he came back. So, obviously, he's learning as he goes. Franz played well all season. I expect him to kind of – I don't know how much of another step he can take, but I expect him to take another step. And then I figured they'll add a lottery pick, and they'll be good. But now with the number one pick, they'll be adding another high-level talent. He's just finding minutes for everybody and kind of figuring out from there. Number one pick, but you have a lot of talent. You can maybe bring him off the bench for a little bit just, just to start the season, let him kind of grow into it so you can kind of really throw him into the fire. Obviously, you got to give him some minutes out there and just uh, be able to learn and grow and those growing pains. But I think they're in a very good position. They have a lot of talent. If anything, they need to trade some of that talent and uh, yeah, get, get, get some uh, maybe more veteran pieces who can fit into a role. But... I think they, they, they should be all right. We'll see how it goes. To me, Jabari, I think I, I would bet right now that Jabari Smith is the number one overall pick to Orlando. It just seems like a no-brainer to me. Regardless. I've seen other people talk about Chet in a high regard. I remember when they got when they got eliminated by Arkansas in the Sweet 16. I thought that that was uh, – there, there was some things there that kind of scared me about Chet as a pro. Jabari, when, once I've seen that Jabari is a big who can space the floor, and it just, make, it just makes total sense that a note that, that – you you had you can get a guy that can he can switch between the four and five if you need him to but he's a five you can get a five a team like Orlando who's histor who's historically made their money on on with the number one overall pick being being Dwight Shaquille O'Neal Dwight Howard that that's just kind of poetic to me like I I think Jabari Jabari Smith Jabari Smith probably number one overall pick and I think he actually comes in with a bit of the same type of presence that Evan Mobley was able to bring to Cleveland this year. Like, I, I, I'm i not going to Orlando, – Orlando's – if everything can stay good for Orlando health-wise, they are a playoff team to me and definitely a team to look out for. Because even when the, we saw they were a playoff team two years ago and they were even they were even giving teams fits that year. Yeah, I, th I think you can even play Jabari Smith at – He's six ten, elite shooter. You think maybe in that KD type of space type of player, you can kind of play him at that three. He's mobile, so you can play him anywhere from maybe the three to maybe five. Oh, like three. You can play him anywhere from the three to the five. It's all gonna be depend. All gonna depend on how how well he guards people and stuff like that. I just think, like I was saying, elite wing players are kind of what has a. Uh, led to success championships in this league. He has a, an elite talent right now. He's an elite shooter. His dad played in the NBA. I think people who, whose dad played in the NBA have been really successful in this league lately. So I think those things going for him, I think. His shooting ability is just going to make a difference. I think that's something that's going to – he's going to be able to impact the game right now. So that's why I, I would 
like they get another pop over there. And then I think bigs just have a, a higher chance of kind of not panning out. Whether it's due to injuries, whether it's just due to he's too small, the, the game's just a little more physical. And they have, and I, like I said, they have that player already. Mo Bamba is that same player. I, I don't so you're saying this in regard to Chet? Yeah, to Chet. Uh, Mo Bamba is that same player. So I, I just want to get rid of that player and bring in the same player with the number one pick. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, Yannick is Mo is going to work out. I don't think Chet is any. I really don't think Chet is any different than Mo Bamba. Big, I think it's a, it's a block shot. I, I, three. He may have a little better handle, maybe, but I don't I don't know how much different he is from Mo Bamba. It's the same type of player. I'd actually I'm, I'd actually prefer Mo Bamba over Chet to be honest with you, because Mobamba still has still has a little more size to him than Chet does. I think that the size thing kind of worries me about Chet as a pro, which is weird to say, because I know people said the same thing about KD, but that's just that's just how I feel. To me, this this draft at the top three is set in stone. I got I don't care what anybody else says. I think Jabari Smith is going first overall. Oklahoma City, unless they decide to just kind of be like, we don't want the number two pick, I think they take Chet. And... I got Bonquette, Bancaro, or Bancaro going to Houston at three if they stay put. I, I think it's interesting at two because even with the same thing, I, I think centers have a higher chance of flaming out. Can he put on weight? What he's, is what he's doing at, at that level going to be able to translate to the NBA? He's real skinny. He, is he going to be able to block shots as much at, at this thing? He's gonna be able, is he going to get knocked off the block a lot? The the uh, the Thunder have a center that they drafted last year. It was kind of the same player. He's a big. He can handle the ball. He's not as good. He's not as good as a shooter. I don't think he's as good as a maybe a shot blocker. So I think Oklahoma City can surprise some people and maybe take Pancaro. But I think Pancaro's trying to make his way to Houston. I think he said something. He's from Seattle, and I think he said something about like not liking the. Thunder. He's from. I heard he's he's actually. I heard he's actually really cool with Jalen Green too. They're build. I'm t- they're building something in Houston. Yeah, I don't. I don't even. I'm like. I. I did say why if they stay put because I saw that Houston. Houston's Houston's GM is kind of could be a smoke screen. We we get a lot of those this time of year. But I've seen little. He he made little comments about like possibly trading back or trading out. Yeah, uh, Eli just said it. Chet ain't bringing anything to Orlando that they don't have already. Keep Mo, bring Mobo into the rotation. I, I, I agree with That's, that. I, didn't even re- I forgot that Bull Bull's over there. Like, he, man, Orlando's got some size to him, man. Paul is – that – I'm just going to stay – Orlando's going to be a scary team next year. And I think playing Wendell at the five, I think Wendell with more minutes at the five is, is good for them. A big, if you could get – say – Guard centers, you play – you be able to play small and kind of stay big. You think if you can put uh, – He can move too. yeah. And you put Smith at the four, he can space the floor out there. I think that'd be better. I think that's a. I think that's a. That's a hell of a lineup. If you're, if you got a lineup of Fultz, Cole, Anthony, we'll see what the, if, if you, maybe you throw Wagner or you could throw Wagner at the two if you want to. Um, so, some somebody somebody really good is coming off the bench on that team because you still got Jonathan Isaac coming back. You talk about drafting Jabari Smith if you and then Wendell Carter. That that's a that's an amazing five, especially with the with the youth that you have there. If they really really want to do it, you can let Mo go too. Play one Dell. I think Mo's out of there. I think regard regardless of what happens, I I think Mo Mo is probably out of there. That'd be funny if he ended up in New York. There's been signs about that. Uh, he uh, you can play one Dell at the five, Isaac at the four. I think if you don't bring another center, and that just opens up. I think that makes it less confusing for them for the sense that uh but if you bring another center in chet could probably only you could maybe play him at the four but then you don't have another center that you'd be playing at the five so chet would take up all those minutes at the five you put wendell at the four you put i mean wendell at the five you put isaac at the four you you bring smith off the bench you think that creates less of confusion because now it's like chad then you have to bring either you have to bring isaac wendell out of the three of Isaac Wendell and Smith, you have to pick one of them to come off the bench. So if you get rid of Mo, don't pick Chad. Now you only move one of them to the bench, and maybe 
you know, as well, like with DG trying to figure out moves and stuff like that. And like I said, Wendell, not as great as a shot blocker, more of a better post defender, more physical, things like that. It's possible. He also can spread the floor, shoot some threes. Wendell's mobile, too, so you can probably switch with him a lot. They got a lot of things they can do here. I think, uh, obviously, they're, they're in a good spot. Yeah, I, I, I'll throw one of those Charles Barkley guarantees. Man, we are getting just crazy, crazy stuff. I was, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, I got, I think Orlando can make a postseason run in a couple of years with that young talent. I did just see Devin Mitchell unsettled on future. Jazz stars wondering what Quinn Schneider's departure means for team going forward. So, I mean, take take that how you want to take it. Yeah, we've seen this coming in in Utah. I think everything's up in the air over there. So that should, that that's just did he want Quinn Snyder back another year? I don't know. I think it's just a perfect way for him to kind of try to work his way out. I think I think he wanted Quinn. Back. I really don't. I'm not on board with you know that I'm not on board with none of this. Donovan Mitchell really wants to leave. I know he. I know like that's. I saw the one thing where he said. They were like, uh, he got asked a question and he said that he wants, he's, well, it was weird that he wants, somebody asked him if he wanted to be in Utah. He said yes. And then another person asked him if he feels like he will be in Utah, so, something along these lines. And he he just kind of emphasized on, on wanting to win. Yeah. You know, uh, you always got to make it look good for yourself. So, oh, you got rid of my coach. Don't bear doesn't really like me. Let me leave. And it looks better than him just requesting a trade. I don't think anyone black just wants to be in Utah. I don't care about that. <laughs> You're not wrong. You're not. Yeah. Unless you're Carl Malone. Other, other than that, yeah. You must like white people. Um, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much all I got today. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, good, good show. Uh, we'll probably... Uh, Come back to recap, recap this, uh, whatever's going on in, in the finals when we get to it. I think it may, next time we come back on, it'll probably be at like a game five or six, depending on anything go, going crazy. But, um, of course, appreciate y'all tuning in. I got Eli in here. We're going to record some Watchers content later. But, um, yeah, man, appreciate you guys tuning in. It's going to be going to be a fun game, too, fun series. And uh, we'll see y'all next time. Peace. Ooh.